the space system, the ATV. The qualification authority for the Ariane 5 ES launcher for this mission is the CNES launcher director. Ariane 5 has never before launched such a large payload. The CNES CSG, as the safety authority, has had to adapt its tracking station network for this mission. With a mobile station on board a vessel in the mid-Atlantic, a new station in the Azores, and others in New Zealand and Australia. At its Toulouse Space Center, the CNES has developed the ATV Control Center for the European Space Agency. It will receive the ATV telemetry from the space station, compute the maneuvers, and telecommand orders throughout the entire mission. These include orbital rendezvous and docking, plus the post-mission activities, undocking, and atmospheric re-entry. On re-entry, the ATV will burn up over the Pacific Ocean. CNES is indeed proud to have been involved in the development of what is without a doubt the European Space Agency's finest and most complex mission to date. This is Yannick Descata here on the screen. Seems uh, happy. As all of us, of course, tonight for this big, big event. And here is the uh, Thierry Vallée, our Director des Operations, the DDO, the Range Operations Manager from CNES, who is uh, in charge of supervising the readiness status of the launch base systems and ground stations. And Philippe Roland, his counterpart on Orient Space side, is the Mission Director, and uh, he is in charge of the operations of the ATV uh, in interface with uh, our customer ESAT tonight. These two often work together, the Ariane Space Mission Director and the CNES CSG DDO. Green status panels on the left, continuing to tell the story. We're on time. We're doing well. Over to Jean-Michel Desobos of Ariane Space now for some facts and figures on the mission tonight. This uh, 181st Ariane flight uh, involves many, many firsts. It's uh, the first time Ariane carries such a heavy payload, 19.4 tons, and such a large payload, more than 10 meters high and more than 4.5 meter diameter. This is why we have to use the long 17 meters fairing. It's also the first time Ariane delivers its payload to a low Earth orbit, 260 kilometer altitude, and 51.62 degrees inclination, and tonight we have a launch on time, which means we have no launch window. We have to launch exactly at the time indicated here. And finally, the first time uh, the Ariane reignites its uh, EPS upper stage for an operational mission. This is a very specific Ariane 5 ES mission. Seeing all this first, you may imagine the enormous teamwork which has been necessary between all the teams involved, ESA, Kines, Ariane Space and the whole space industry in Europe to reach such a novel milestone. Coming up on eight minutes before liftoff of the ATV, what's happening now on the launcher side? The very last oxygen and hydrogen loading cycles of the core stage continue to be performed. We are now in a waiting phase a few minutes away from the start of the fully automatic checkout sequence called synchronoid sequence. You're going to hear the DDO call out at seven minutes, the synchronized sequence, and we'll give you a little explanation of what that is. Before we do that, Jean-Michel, uh, in his interview, talked about launching on time for the window tonight. What exactly is that? Well, tonight we have no launch window. Uh, we have a rendezvous with the ISS, so we have a uh, fixed launch time, and uh, this will be uh, the single moment that is fixed for the launch. DDO going to call out the seven minute mark and we'll be into the point the final minutes of the final countdown where the computers are taking the video attention for H0 minus seven minutes and DDO Thierry Valley is going to call out that seven minute mark and then we'll be into the final moments of final countdown when the computers begin to take over top H0 minus seven minutes at the end of the sequence final lanceur okay we're beginning the final Countdown where, what, two computers are checking out everything? Two computers, redundant computers, so are uh, checking and carrying out uh, two sequences, one for the fluid system, the other one for the electrical systems. 
and these computers are located up in the CDL, which is the launch the launch uh, control center. Launch center, which is uh, a shot of it here. It's about 13, 14 kilometers to the northwest of where we are here in Jupiter. This man, Andre Sicard, who's the manager up there, we'll be hearing from him in a moment talking about the launcher campaign. But these are his teams of about 150, 200 uh, men and women doing the final checks. They're much closer to the launch pad than we are. Yeah, the launch operations manager is leading the Iron Space launch team together with the launch vehicle production manager. From this launch control center, the Iron Space and its industrial teams are permanently monitoring and operating all the ground and onboard uh, fluid and electrical systems. It's a shot of the fairing, the big 17 meter fairing, the large version, under which is the 20 ton automated transfer vehicle. 19.4 actually. Close enough to 20. Close enough to 20, yes. So the launcher is now fully fueled and the upper stage and the attitude control system uh, are uh, ready to be uh, operated for the launch. At uh, five and a half minutes, Alex, can you give us, well, you give us a status report after the news because we're going to go to the latest news from the area and space people and there's quite a bit of news as you'll see. Success for the Space Shuttle STS-122 mission. It has successfully delivered the European Scientific Module Columbus to the International Space Station. A module of 21 tons, 6.75 meters in length and 4.5 meters in diameter. It has been developed by Astrium in Bremen and the European Space Agency has once again placed Europe as the long-term key player of space exploration. International space conferences are where Ariane Space often showcases new opportunities for its customers. Satellite 2008 in Washington, D.C., seen here, followed SatTech 2008 in Singapore, where Ariane Space announced its new microsatellite carrying structure for Soyuz, which will allow the launch of five microsats weighing up to 400 kilos. News from the Russians in French Guiana. The construction site of Soyuz is progressing well. In French Guiana, the infrastructures of the launch site have become a reality. This site is always very busy. In Europe, the Russian teams and the Iran space teams are working together for the manufacturing of the first Soyuz launcher to be launched early next year. The newest addition to the European launcher family, Vega, is growing with completion of the mobile gantry for its launch pad. The European Space Agency program, with Italy as prime contractor, is making steady progress, and Ariane Space predicts a bright commercial future for the light-lift Vega vehicle. Isaac Ness and Ariane Space were honored by the presence of the French president, Nicolas Sarkozy, during his visit in French Guiana. To the key players of the space sector, Nicolas Sarkozy did reiterate France's dedication and involvement in the world space adventure. A word about the weather before taking, uh, for going on the air, we had a light cloud cover over here in Nakuru, so my guess is we may lose uh, the Ariane 5 to low clouds of visibility. I'm yeah, talking but about, so of far the, uh, the conditions are green and everything's fine. We, we, we do have constraints that are linked to the uh, meteor uh, weather conditions at liftoff, uh, especially the wind direction and velocity at low and high altitude and, uh, at, uh, and mostly the risk of lightning due to a storm or the presence of important uh, convective clouds. So we have a periodical forecast which is provided to the, uh, to the operational team uh, up to uh, 80 minus one minute. Going to some...